love to for you to set the scene for us a little bit here with the uh, the broader market. Uh, you know, been talking about how either this is uh, kind of an unimpressive bull market since October or it's a, a really non-scary bear market for the last few months. Uh, do we have to make a definition? And what, what's your general take here on the tactical positioning? Well, markets have been up the last four out of five weeks, but it doesn't feel that way to a lot of people, and that's what's important. Uh, technology has started to wane a little bit, and so that makes the market seem a little choppier. Uh, we have had really good movement in sectors like healthcare, utilities, but really the, the, the rotation has gotten a lot more defensive in the last month at a time when sentiment has gotten more optimistic. So April tends to be one of the best months of the year, and I still think trends are positive in the near term. But as we go into May, I think there is a heightened chance that we could finally see, you know, the much awaited correction that I think a lot of people are waiting on. And it should prove short lived, but there are some warning signs that are creeping up on the horizon. If that's the case, Mark, I mean, you mentioned the outperformance that has been showing up in some of the more traditional defensive sectors. Uh, is it time to follow on uh, and, and participate in those moves at this point in any of those that you saw? I mean, we have some pretty good earnings in the last several trading days from some of the big consumer staple stocks, for instance. Yeah, I like healthcare care is really the best of any of the defensive sectors because there are parts of healthcare, of course, that are a little more risk on like biotechnology and really medical devices. But you see equal weighted health care right now is on the verge of breaking out of a pattern versus the equal weighted S&P uh, going back over the last couple of years. Now, this is not immediately evident when you look at charts of XLV, but it does really highlight the movement in some of these subsectors when you look at a, you know, a non market weighted type ETF when you look at equal weighted. So a lot of pharma stocks, a lot of the medical devices, we've seen recent really good movement, you know, stocks like, uh, you know, Medtronic, of course, and Boston Scientific. And that's really an excellent area to position. And, uh, and really the pharmaceutical area also, I think is, is phenomenal. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Tech has had this big run up. You know, there's no saying that tech can't work for the year, uh, but certainly it makes sense to consider maybe some diversification at this stage of the rally, just given what we've seen. And I wonder uh, about Coca-Cola after reporting decent earnings. There was an initial positive response, and then the stock is now backed off during the day today, and it's kind of bumping up against what's been the upper end of a, of a trading range. How would you assess that one? Well, the Coke, if you look at it over the last few years, it has actually broken out of a pretty lengthy downtrend. Uh, you know, it is one of my favorite consumer staple stocks right now. Um, I do like the stock. I think it likely moves back to all time highs. So it is right to, to favor Coke technically. Uh, I've heard a lot of the fundamental reports have also been quite positive. So technicals are starting to mirror uh, the, fundament, the fundamental names and really uh, acts very, very well, technically speaking. Um, you mentioned that, um, yeah, well, the banks sector has obviously been a bit of a uh, of an albatross on this market, and it kind of creates ammo for both bulls and bears, right? You could say, uh, if you're bearish, you say no real sustainable rally has tended to continue if the banks are outright weak, as they have been over the last couple of months. On the other hand, the overall tape has managed to hold together even with that uh, that drag from the banks. So, is there opportunity in bottom fishing there, or would you sort of say this is a broken sector for now? Well, in an intermediate term basis, I would say it's, it is broken. I, I say there are some excellent large cap banks that have rebounded quite sharply that do still look attractive. And a lot of those, like the JP Morgans, the Citigroups, the Bank of Americas of the world, uh, they've shown some really excellent signs of rebounding off those lows. It's really the regional bank area that has tried to stabilize a little bit, but it hasn't been that convincing to me yet that this is really a go to area for in the medium term, uh, long investors. And in terms of a possible further pullback into May, as you say, maybe we're setting up for, uh, what would be a kind of acceptable level of uh, a pullback from here? Because, you know, since October, there have been a couple uh, of retreats in the S&P 500 that did not really wipe out all the previous rallies. So I'm wondering how we would uh, kind of frame out what a pullback might look like. Yeah, trends are still intact. We would really need to get down under 39.40 in the S&P cash index. And that would be a big concern that we could see further weakness. Uh, 3,800, of course, is, is the larger level for an immediate term investors. That cannot be broken without thinking trends are turning a lot more bearish. I don't expect that needs to happen. But I think that a move down to 39.40 to 4,000 is certainly a possibility uh, in the month of May. And, and as of yet, we don't really have sufficient signs to say that it's underway just yet. So we could mm -hmm. get to 4,200, if not above that, you know, before we see even a minimal pullback. 